we persevere, so it's all about us, therefore God preserves and keeps us. And therefore it depends on man's work. Biblical Christianity, which goes by the theological shorthand of Calvinism, teaches we persevere and live an overcoming holy life because God preserves and keeps us. And he does that totally at grace. So we can supply the word preservation to verse 6. If by grace, then is preservation no more of works. Otherwise grace is no more grace. But if preservation be of works, then is it no more grace. Otherwise work it is no more work. Let's widen this out a bit. What have we seen so far to be of grace alone? Election and foreknowledge, both of individuals and of the church as a body. Then we also saw preservation is of grace alone without works. Now, election and foreknowledge is at the very start in the eternal mind and decree and purpose of God. And preservation infallibly takes each and every believer to glory in the world to come. And so if the very beginning and the very end are all of grace, then everything in between must be and is of grace alone too. Or else the whole thing falls to the ground and the whole thing then is of works. So if we think about the order of salvation... The work of God and applying it to us in time. Regeneration of grace, not of works in any sense. Not even part of it because then it wouldn't really be grace. Calling, justification, adoption and sanctification. And all of these of course are covenant blessings. And the word covenant is not used as such in these verses. But it talks about Israel, the covenant people. That's the subject of this chapter. And then it uses the word people. Hath God cast away his people, the elect, <coughs> foreknown people? And that's covenant language too. And so election, regeneration, calling, justification, adoption, sanctification, preservation, and glorification... You don't need to get all the words or immediately identify them to get the point. All the bits and bobs of salvation, every element and stage in it, pertains to the covenant of grace. And therefore the covenant itself is all of grace. I could supply the word covenant for the word it. If by grace then is it the covenant, no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. You can talk about a covenant of grace, but once you put works in there as a determining part of even a bit of it, then it's no more grace at all. You believe in a covenant of works. If it be of works, then it's no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. The covenant is of grace alone. And the biblical and reformed principle Grace alone must be applied to God's covenant too. Must be. Has to be. No other way. Let me take you now to a couple of texts that have an it. Like Romans 11 verse 6. Then it is no more of works. The first of them is an especially well known verse. Ephesians 2 verses 8 and nine for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of god not of works lest any man should boast it is the gift of god and that's salvation by faith <coughs> alone it just like our text and it where it refers to salvation in its many branches here's another one where the it refers to salvation. So then, Romans 9 verse 16, it is not of him that willeth, 
nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. It, salvation, election, reprobation, mercy to God's people in pardoning their sins, it is not of him who wills, not free will, nor of him who runs all the exertions and works of man, but it is of God that showeth mercy. That's grace, not works, in the light of the context, the immediately prior context, the first five verses of Romans 11. It applies to the latter part of the chapter 2, but we're not going to get into that now. That's for another day. At this point, we need to see that verse 6, grace, not works, is a very important principle best way for me to show you how important this principle is, is to have you imagine, just for a minute now, just for a minute, imagine that verse 6 had been left out. So then in the first five verses, the apostle would be saying that there is always a remnant, a few, a part of the whole, not the larger part, there's always a remnant of according to the election of grace, like the 7,000 in Elijah's day. Then verse 7, What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. If you were to leave out verse 6, the argument would still make sense, make good sense too. So that verse could have been omitted. Just imagine that for the sake of argument. And so we say that Paul added this verse, as it were. Added verse 6 because he wanted to expand on the point that he had made about grace in verse 5. There's a remnant according to the election of grace. And so Paul reckons here that he hasn't said enough about grace hasn't said enough about grace, even in the epistle to the Romans, 16 chapters, his longest epistle, along with 1 Corinthians, also 16 chapters, hasn't said enough about it in his longest epistle, and the epistle which says most about grace. So he needs to put in verse 6. Hasn't said enough about grace, even though he has explained that redemption and justification cross of Christ are by grace alone at the end of chapter 3. But he needs to say more. He needs to explain more about grace even though he said in the second half of chapter 8 that God loves his people in Christ unchangeably and unbreakably. But he needs to say more about grace. He needs to say more about grace even though he spent the whole of chapter 9 explaining grace as it works out in election and reprobation. But he needs to say more about it in case his readers in the first instance at Rome and throughout church history haven't got it clear. And then he tar talks about grace in chapter 10 and even that astounding verse, verse 20, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. I just came by grace. They weren't even interested. I saved them. And then in the first Five verses of chapter 11, he has talked about the remnant according to the election of grace, and he says, that isn't enough. There's a possibility that some people mightn't get it, and so I add verse 6, needs to be said. And we have exactly the same spirit as the Apostle Paul, because we believe it needs to be said, does verse 6. Antithetically and clearly, that was the spirit of the Reformation. If it's of grace, there's no more works, otherwise it's not really grace at all, you're talking about something else. So as I said, Paul adds verse 6 because he wants to be sharply antithetical. He wants to be really and unmistakably clear that it, salvation, election, foreknowledge, preservation of the saints, all of salvation, 